Hi everybody, welcome back to Foss Media. This channel is all about the Foss. In today's video, we're going to go over static IP version 4 addresses and DNS settings. At the beginning, everything we go over here may seem a bit complicated, but after we get into it and start to make configurations manually, I'm sure it'll all become much more clear and easier to understand. The goals for today are to create a static IP version 4 a private address and change the DNS servers the computer uses to resolve the external IP address. Reasons for doing this are to prevent DHCP from renewing the device's private IP version 4 address while using a VPN service and to prevent DNS leaks. If you're already familiar with the different types of IP addresses, DNS servers, and tools that are used to find this information on your system, and just looking for some quick instructions, you may want to skip ahead. I'll make sure to leave a timestamp down below. But first up, we have private IP version 4 addresses. An example of one would be right here, 192.168.1.100. Take note of the last, uh, that this address has four different fields, and the last field is for your device. And the first three are for the network. So most of the addresses on your net, or just about all of them will look the same, starting with 192.168.1. And then the last three right here, the last three digits or the last field will be for your device. These addresses are assigned by DHCP, which stands for Dynamic Host, Host Configuration Protocol, and it'll come with a lease. When this lease expires, the address may change, and often does. It happens If this happens while using a VPN service, the connection will be momentarily interrupted, which would expose your real public IP address, the one that you're trying to hide with your VPN service. This is why we'll want to make this address static and prevent it from even changing in the first place. The DNS, which stands for Domain Name System, resolves IP addresses to their domain names, which enables us to locate a website by its name instead of its IP address. It basically acts as a middleman, translating user requests into IP address. If this is not manually configured, your computer will use the one that resides within your router to do this, which can be a problem because it originates from your ISP. And if you don't want your ISP to know which websites that you're visiting, you will need to change this also. So in order to create a static IP version 4 address and change your DNS server, you will need the IP address of the router, the IP address range of the network, the net mask, and the address of the DNS servers that you want to add. You can use the, you can use the command ifconfig or IP address show to find your public or sorry to find your private IP version 4 address and net mask. And as a quick note, the net mask is used to identify which parts of the IP address are used to identify the network and which are used to identify the host, which we kind of just went over a couple minutes ago. To find the writer's IP address, you can use the command netstat-rn. And to locate hosts that are already on the network, the command arpscan-l can be used. After we get the information we need, we can then go to the network manager and make the necessary changes. So let's do that. First off though, we'll have to install some tools and most of which are probably already installed on your system. But I found that our new uh, distribution releases, some of them are either missing or have been depreciated, such as ifconfig. You can't get by with IP address show, but I just prefer ifconfig because it looks much nicer and it's just all around user, more user friendly to use, <laughs> if that makes any sense. So I'll be installing it. And if we install net tools, we will get ifconfig along with it and a bunch of other great stuff as well. I already have these tools installed on my system, so I'll be using a virtual machine so I can follow along and install them with you. And I guess I'll just switch over to it right now. So first we're gonna open up a, uh, open up a terminal and see what's included with net tools. To do this, we can use the command apt show net tools. 
Oh, and just let me full screen this guy. That's a bit better. And down here in the script in the description, uh, we can see that we get ARP. I have config, netstat, RARP, whatever that is. I've never used that. Uh, name if and route. Route's also a really handy tool too. Uh, not one we'll be using today, but definitely nice to have in the package as well. Yeah, so I'm just gonna add the command down here. Uh, still in it tools. And then we want uh, IP calc. And then ARP scan. Yeah, I think that's it. That tools, IP calc, ARP scan. Yeah, once you have all that in there, just hit enter. Yeah, almost done. Yep, all done. So now that we have all our tools installed, let's grab the information that we need. And I've just prepared a quick little list here. Uh, so we need the router's IP address. And to get that, we can use the command netstat-rn. And there's our router's address, also known as the gateway address. So I'm just gonna copy that and paste it right here. And then we need to uh, find the IP range. And to do that, we can use IP calc, followed by the address of the gateway. So I'm just gonna copy that, paste that there, and enter. And this gives us all kinds of useful information. Uh, what the ones we're after are the uh, minimum and maximum host, and that'll give us the range of the network. So right now I'm just gonna copy the minimum one. Go over to our notes, paste it here. And then the maximum. Copy. So as long as the address that we choose to use as our static IP address falls within this range, we should be good to go. Uh, next, we need the netmask, and we can use the command I have config for that. And this is the one we're after right here. Uh, and I can tell it's this one because it's this interface that has been assigned an IP address. So this is the one that we're currently using to connect to the network. Uh, this guy down here is the loopback. That just references our uh, machine or our local host on our own network. Uh, so this is the guy we'll be using right here. Uh, the netmask that belongs to this interface. So just copy that. And I'll paste it up here. There we go. And now we just need our DNS addresses. And to do that, we can open up a browser, which I have right here. And to just do a search for DNS addresses. A public. Wire, that'll probably work. Let's see, what we got here. Oh, there's some. There's Google's Cloudflare. This is the one I normally use right here. Um, Google or Cloudflare, probably doesn't really matter. I just try to limit the amount of uh, Google products I use as much as possible. Um, and I read that there's more down here too. Let's check out those and see what those look like. Oh, there they are right there. Oh, yeah, and I'm tempted to use some of these and I'll probably try them later. But yeah, for today, I'm just gonna pick the ones up top here though. Uh, do, do, do. Yeah, I probably just Cloudflare for now. So yeah, I'll just copy those. Or four ones, one zero zero one. It's easy to remember. So 1.1.1.1. 1 
1.0.1. Uh, maybe double check. Yep, looks good to me. Okay, so now that we have all that, we have to uh, come up with an address that we want to use. So like I said before, it just needs to be within this range. And I find with normal devices that uh, connect using DHCP, um, they're typically um, around 100 or under 100. So just as a general rule of thumb, whenever I make my static IP addresses, I always try to keep them above 200 uh, just to make sure. Um, but before we do that, we can also run a command um, ARP scan just to make sure that there aren't any other devices on the network using that address. And I believe we need sudo for that. So sudo ARP scan. Oh, sorry, I forgot the flag. Dash L. Yeah, and because I'm on a virtual machine, I'm only going to have the uh, the one server here that represents the router. But um, if you're not on a virtual machine, you'll obviously have a lot more of these. Every device that's connected to your network will be listed here, uh, along with its MAC address. And the only danger here is you do not want anyone else to get your MAC address. If they do get your MAC address, they can um, just change their MAC address to match yours. And then whatever they do out on the uh, internet can just be linked back to right back to your device. So you can probably imagine the uh, implications that would arise from something like that happening. So yeah, if you're wondering, that's why it's blurred out. Um, just because I don't want to expose it. And um, yeah, that wouldn't be good at all. But anyway, so now that we know that uh, <clears throat> The address that we're going to be using um, isn't already being used. As long as I don't use the one by the router, we're okay. And as far as you go, just make sure that you don't have any of the ones that are listed here. Or make sure the address that you're going to use isn't any of the ones that will be listed down here. Yeah. So. Uh, there we go. We just need to pick one now uh, that is not within this range up here and is not one of the ones that we just saw in ARP scan. So I'm just going to go with 192.168-122-say220 and use that. So now that we have all our information, we can go into our DNS settings or sorry, our network settings. Mine are right here. Uh, and this is the, uh, it's, I'm, cause I'm on a virtual machine, it's showing up as a wire connection. It's actually wireless and yours might be too. Um, but because yeah, like I said, I'm on a virtual machine, it's hooked up as wired. So I'm just gonna pick this one right here. And you can see too, we have some, some of our network information here as well. Uh, not everything we need, but some of it's here. So we would have needed to uh, download and install those tools anyways. And they're just nice to have. So anyways, yeah, let's start with IP version 6. Seeing as we're not even using those. Uh, not until we run out of IP version 4 addresses. Which will hopefully be in a long time from now. Because I think that'll happen once uh, the internet things becomes more of a reality. Which is a day I'm not looking forward to. So... I'm just going to disable that. And that's all we need to do for IP version 6. Switch over to IP version 4. Click on manual. Uh, then some fields open up. Uh, right here, this is the address that we'll want to use. And I'm just going to go back to the notes here. And I'll copy this address. So this will be the static address right here. Uh, And I'm just going to paste in right here. And then we have our net mask, which is right here. Paste that in there. Uh, and then the gateway address. 
which is right here. Copy that and go here. And we're only using the one static IP, so I'm just gonna leave this one blank. Uh, and then we'll go to our DNS servers and double check those. And these are the ones we wanted right here. So we'll copy that, throw that in there. And then these have to be separated by a comma and a space. So just leave one there, copy this one. And paste that in there. And that's it. So now all we have to do now is uh, hit apply, restart the machine, and we should be good to go. So just to double check, uh, this dress looks good. Netmask, that's the Netmask, and that's the gateway. We've got our Cloudflare DNS addresses in there. Uh, IP version 6 has been disabled, just like we wanted. Yeah, it looks good. So I'm just going to hit apply. And then we can close this guy out right here. Um, and then I'll just have to go out of full screen so I can restart my machine. Now we'll just wait for that to reboot. Then after this reboots, all we have to do is run the command I have config just to make sure that our static IP address is, uh, me, yeah, sorry, to make sure our static IP address has uh, taken effect. So let's click on this guy. I just always click on the gear icon to make sure I'm using X11 instead of Wayland. The password there. And if you can tell, this screen resolution is a little wonky, so I'm going to fix that before I run the command. So let's open up the terminal. Oh, let's let me full screen first. And I'll just fix this resolution here quick. Okay, so now that everything's all nice and clear and pretty, uh, through the screen and run IF config. And what we want to see here is the, uh, the IP address that we just set for our static address. Yep, and there it is 192.168.122-220. And I believe before this it was 85. So yeah, it's definitely changed. And every time you reboot, it should just never change. And this is also handy if um, you're hosting any servers, say uh, SSH. If even on, if you're just on a local network and you want to uh, SSH into one to another machine, um, yet yeah, you can use that without address, and you can set up your configuration file, and and nothing should change in the future. And yeah, it should be to work just perfect. And now that we have a static address too, we don't have to worry that this address is going to change when we're using the VPN. So we're also good there. And our DNS should be good as well. So after um, use, if you're using a VPN, um, you can just go to dnsleaktest.com and just double check that your uh, DNS isn't coming from your ISP and it's that it's coming from a Google server or, or your um, VPN provider that you're using. So yeah, I think that about wraps it up for uh, static IP addresses and DNS settings. Uh, I'm just trying to think of what else here I can I can tell you to uh, that I may be forgetting. And no, I think that's about it. So I hope you guys found this video helpful and you want able to understand more about private IP version four addresses and DNS settings, uh, what they do, what you can do to modify them and why you'd want to. So yeah, thanks for checking out the channel and watching the video. And I hope to see you next time. Bye for now.